<laughs> that is so weird when she talks to me. I'm getting that at every meeting I go to. That must be a, a yeah, it's a new Zoom feature to Oh no. Oh yeah. I'll get there upstairs. So you headed to Mooresville today? Yes. So is Betty still getting ready? Getting her uh, in place? Yeah, she, she's she's done with that part. She's just into her uh, her uh, isolated time. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> there she is. Oh, Brent, did you know one of your close neighbors died? No, who's um, that? Dwayne Copeland. You know who that is? Yeah. Okay, his youngest son Rex that lived next door to him. Yeah. Uh, they they found him in bed. Uh, Memorial Day. Oh my. He was 54. Good heavens. Well, I was wondering if somebody uh, died last night. There was a bad wreck at uh, Joppa in 267. Uh, a, a black van got broadsided by it looked like a, a dump truck or something and just destroyed. Wow. Uh, yeah, we, we were yeah, going we out through there, but I didn't look at the details. Yeah, we were going out for dinner and uh, the one the van was still there and but when we came home then state police were there and so I was wondering if there might not have been a fatality. I haven't heard anything. Yeah. Yeah. More and more, there's accidents at that corner. Well, I you think. Can't see. Yeah, I think more and more, and it's because part of it's the diversion because of the construction in Mooresville. Everybody's using yeah. other county roads and so on to get around. People hardly slow down when they come around that curve from out of Mooresville. Right. It's yeah. really tricky to look both ways and get out in time if they're going too fast. Yeah, I know. I I was coming through that accident scene and I I wanted to stop, but the fireman was calling me to go through and it just felt uncomfortable, you know, just, just driving through. Yeah. Because I was on the county line going west. So your road is closed, is it not? Um. Uh, in in Mooresville, it's closed. Okay. Stop through the bridge. <laughs> okay. <coughs> it's kind of weird because it's like when we first moved here, there wasn't as much traffic as there is normally now, and it's back to that level. So it seems kind of weird. <laughs> <laughs> Morning, Dale. <laughs> Morning. Hi, Dale. How are things? Now that the Iowans have joined us, how's Iowa? Uh, hot. Yeah. Hot? 90 some degrees today. Ugh. <laughs> yesterday. What did I see? Bismarck was 101 yesterday. Oh. Something like that. There's something wrong with that picture. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and again, we're in need of rain. We're in need really badly with the hot wind it just dries everything up really fast uh, we're supposed to get rain every day this week, day this week. Oh. Hmm. hi dave morning it's warmer than it's going to get here no 
How warm is it going to get there, Dave? Uh, they're saying up to 89 or 90. And uh, it was, what, 80 this morning when I walked Louie at 6 o'clock. So it's pretty warm. I guess it's going to get warm. <clears throat> we finally had some rain, though. We had earlier this week, we had a quarter of an inch of rain about three nights in a row. And then Thursday night, we had two inches. So wow. finally washed off a little dust around here. So who's in the meeting house? Uh, Chip. Me, Lynn. And Lynn. <laughs> and Norma's here. Right? Norma's here somewhere. OK. Nancy's not here today. She was too worn out to come today. Oh. Decided she was, she got up to try and get ready and just couldn't do it, so. Mm -hmm. And Steve's going to bail hay since it's supposed to rain every day this week. He's got to get it up and off the ground. So he won't be here in either format today. Lots of hay going around being bailed here. We have a lot to do, but we didn't cut a whole lot because we knew it was supposed to rain, and it was a good thing. I don't think it's supposed to rain a lot every day, but it's supposed to rain some every day till next Saturday. Mm, my goodness. Remember when I moved to Jericho as a city boy, Jericho's little church out by Winchester, Indiana, a friend's meeting. <laughs> and uh, I thought I wanted to be helpful, so I volunteered, you know, if anybody needs help, you know, I was the pastor there. And, the first job I got called for was baling hay. <laughs> Perfect for a guy with allergies. I never worked so hard in my life. I was like, good heavens. <laughs> I'll ask for, I'll go to a city meeting next time. <laughs> you know, Brent, some people do that for a living. I know, I can't believe it. <laughs> Now, Gene Peacock loved living on the farm. So, I mean, that's, that's what he did, so. We do it the easy way now, we'll create big brown bales. So nobody has to oh. pick up the little squares. Uh, we were picking up those square ones and throwing them up on the yeah. wagon. And then they had this big dinner at night and it was like, who can eat? I just want to go home and take a shower, <laughs> go to bed. When we lived south of West Newton there, there was a family next, not, well, you back fenced us, I guess, that uh, put up hay and straw for a living. Uh, they also farmed, they had several, I don't know how many cows they milked there. They, they had 18 kids. So they were growing their own help. You're exaggerating. There were only 17 kids. <laughs> <laughs> Which one? There was the, the Skinners and the, and the other oh, family, what was their names? Oh, the Freemans. Freemans, yeah. Oh, I, was, I guess I thought I meant Freemans. Yeah, I you meant Skinners. Oh, OK. <laughs> Whatever was in the water they were drinking out of that well, they should have buried the well. <laughs> Maybe they wanted two baseball teams. Yeah. Yes, they had them, didn't they? <laughs> well, my son-in-law's uh, mother or grandmother was from a, they were Italian. Italian Catholic. She was one of 19 children. Yeah. From Sicily. I just can't imagine. He told me one time watching some of the old movies is like watching scenes from The Godfather at the weddings and stuff. All these people dressed up and looking slightly scary. <laughs> Supposedly, quite a few people in the mafia came from Sicily. Yeah. Hey, Norma.
Well, for those who are local, who need something to do or want something to do at 1130, Shirley Hayfley's moving to friends' apartments in uh, friends' home in, in Richmond. And at 1130, they're having a little farewell tay a tay for her at Valley Mills. So folks are welcome to stop by. Is there service from 1030 to 1130? Yeah. So I think a few of us here are gonna go over there. Just but I hope so. <laughs> did her adieu. She's been very supportive to the activities um, at West Newton. They've always come to the harvest dinners and any kind of classes we offered, she would be there. So yep. she's one of our people too. Yeah. But I they can were, see why she'd go there. They were good neighbors of Charles and Ruth for many years. Uh -huh. um, they purchased the house next door uh, when Lowell and Lena left that house. Mm. It was a special feature for me when we, the, the year we, after we came back from Africa. Uh -huh. I didn't, I didn't know that she knew my family at all, but uh, <laughs> she, she did, um, she was very um, helpful to me when I was pretty well lost in a new, in a new place and she saw me. Well, we're going to skip out real quick after worship this morning because Dan is the Sunday school teacher for the for the church down the road that he's been attending for decades. The one that burned down. Oh, is is, is meeting uh, in the community center. What's the lesson today, Dan? <laughs> oh, he's going to stir him up. <laughs> We're looking at uh, <clears throat> uh, starting out stories from the Old Testament that they find inspiring. They want them to share that, and then stories from the Old Testament that they find troublesome. And then we're going to be focusing on uh, uh, the aftermath of the Battle of Jericho. Whoa! <clears throat> uh, when when they ki when they killed everybody in town. I wish I, I wish I could attend. <laughs> just to, I, just to sit there and hear it. Well, um, I've got a lot of quotes from different theologians on how they justify or explain that, and we're supposed to discuss all of those. And, and the last option is the Bible said it. What is there to say? It must be true if the Bible said it. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I think Lynn's ready with a prelude if we'd like to hear that, and then we'll do uh, joys and concerns uh, when the prelude's over.
Are there uh, joys or concerns uh, that friends would like to share at this time? My niece and nephew, who are missionaries in Peru, are coming home this week and will be home for the summer. So I'm really excited about getting to see them for the first time in two or three years, something like that. So pray for their safe trip and um, lots of fun family time. Just a second. Uh, yeah, Beth and I hope to go over there to the reception. <clears throat> and uh, <clears throat> I did. I wanted to mention that Gene, when we lost Gene Hapley, uh, he was quite a leader in the community. Uh, he used to give seminars at the Indiana Library Association meetings on how to get along with and lobby the state legislature. And uh, Gene was very approachable, easy to talk to. And uh, he wore his military uniform, he told me, when he and Shirley were married. And there was a, a tolerance and an openness to people who served in the military in Quakerism. And uh, they were not ostracized when he wore a, a, a military uniform, and yet he was not, quote, a military type person. He's just example, Gene uh, Hayflick exemplified the kind of, of open-mindedness and the kind of uh, partnership that he had with Shirley certainly had an influence on many young people, uh, not only in Valley Mills, but beyond Valley Mills too. I just wanted to mention Gene at the same time that the people are honoring Shirley. Yeah. <laughs> Just want to um, say that Dan and I have now uh, reached the six month mark. <laughs> and, and I think we like each other better than ever. So, <laughs> is that a joy or a concern? Oh, no, it's a joy. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, I want to make sure you said you reached the six month mark. And so, <laughs> that's great. I mentioned to Brent before we started that. Um, my uncle that lives there by, so you'll know, White Lake Cemetery, mm -hmm. uh, his youngest son, they found dead in his bed on Memorial Day. Oh, no. Who lived next door to him, so the funeral's tomorrow. Oh. If you... If I could say that last weekend I went to the summer, my summer place on an island off Portland for the first time in a year and a half. And um, I'm afraid the carpenter ants may have had their way with some piece of it, I don't know. <clears throat> oh. But uh, <clears throat> work is being done. And, uh, and it was just so lovely. Uh, the heat wasn't working and it was 45 degrees overnight and I just don't care. It was just lovely, just lovely to be by the ocean. And oh, by the way, Monday night we're having our thing on Howard Thurman. We'll send you an email. Great. Well, I have a, a joy that Nancy and I have is, um, as you know, my son Ben lives in Japan. Uh, he has two two daughters, and uh, one of whom is friends with me on Instagram. And so she sent me a, a picture yesterday, said, hi, Grandpa, I got married today. Oh. <laughs> and oh. sent a picture of her i mean i knew they were planning on getting married but she sent a picture of uh, her name's aaron and uh, she's the youngest she's 21 uh, of her and her boyfriend who's in the japanese or her husband now who's in the japanese coast guard yuki is his name and then later on they sent a picture at their reception and they both have t-shirts on that have their baby pictures on them <laughs> which which was uh japanese customs sometimes are very interesting let me just say that but she was very very happy and wanted me to know and sent all kinds of hearts and 
other emojis since her English is not that good, but uh, she wanted grandpa to know. So we're rejoicing in that good news. Well, let's uh, hold these things in our hearts and our minds as we uh, center down, lift them to God um, and entrust them to God's care. And um, I'm the worship lead. I'll speak out of the silence uh, as I feel led. As I was uh, thinking about what I was going to speak on this week, um, I came up, uh, I saw a meme that somebody had sent into the uh, Association of Bad Friends that we posted, and it, it said, on the eighth day, God created humor. And then below it, it said, many were missing that day. <laughs> uh, um, and, and I thought, <clears throat> yeah, humor. Uh, perhaps uh, now would be a good time to talk about joy and, and humor. Um, it's not that there's not plenty of seriousness in the world. There certainly is. Um, from the pandemic that still is raging. I mean, uh, where Ben is in Japan, it's still horrid. Uh, India is awful, other places. Um, then we have our own little uh, tragedies in our lives or horrors that seem to come. Um, and yet, uh, <clears throat> 
it does seem that humor is something that need is needed and is a gift uh, from the divine. A few years ago, I was reading a poem by uh, one of Douglas Steer's uh, daughters, and it was on on uh, a spirit of lightheartedness, and it was really good. It had a a song in it that I liked that was based on a quote of George Fox. Uh, and you'll re you may recognize the quote, but it, it was given under a title, uh, Humor in Hard Times, that section of the book. And it said, um, Humor in Hard Times. And here's the song. Uh, I'm not going to sing it, but sing and rejoice, ye children of the day and the light. Sing and rejoice, ye children of the day and of the light. For the Lord God is at work. The Lord God is at work. The Lord God is at work in this thick night. In this thick night of darkness that may be felt. Sing and rejoice for the Lord God is at work. And we are children of the day and of the light. I thought about that as I was thinking about um, the need for good humor in hard times and how it relieves hard times. And as I was thinking about that, <coughs> I was on Facebook, as I often am, and one of my uh, writing Quaker friends, Jennifer Cavanaugh, in Great Britain, uh, posted a, uh, a quote from Christopher Goodchild, who's a, an autistic Quaker, was an autistic Quaker in Britain. And in one of his books, he wrote, laughter simply creates a space for grace. And I thought that was lovely. Especially coming from someone with autism. Laughter simply creates space for grace and certainly we need some grace and some space and some laughter <laughs> jennifer also when i told her i said well that's that's great i think i'll use that in my message on sunday <laughs> she sent us she goes well you might enjoy this little story too uh, she said some years ago i introduced a Sufi master to his first meeting for worship there in London. And uh, she said, I was nervous in case he found some of the ministry difficult, but he said he found that the ministry had grown organically from the silence. <clears throat> but he said, you are also serious. You are also serious. What you need is a Quaker mirthquake. And I thought, I thought that was delightful. We need a Quaker mirthquake. <coughs> Sometimes outsiders see us better than we see ourselves. I mean, I think most Quakers have a pretty good sense of humor outside of meeting for worship. But um, this need for a bit of, of levity and... Uh, because there is much around us to rejoice and be, be happy in. And as Oscar Wilde once said, seriousness is the only refuge of the shallow. Well, we don't want to be shallow. We want to be, be deep in the things of the spirit, be deep in God. And so uh, I was thinking about a scripture lesson that I'd read this morning. And I'm going to read the one uh, that I read at uh, Kelsey and Anthony's wedding two weeks ago. They picked a new version of um, 1 Corinthians 13 was uh, by Alan Dale from uh, a, a book called New World, The Heart of the New Testament in Plain English. And this is, uh, This is what I read as I stood up and Anthony was here and Kelsey, or Kelsey was here and 
the wedding parties all lined up. This is what love is like. Love is never in a hurry and is always kindness itself. It doesn't envy anybody at all. It never boasts about itself. It's never snobbish or rude or selfish. It doesn't keep on talking about the wrong things other people do. Remembering the good things is happiness enough. Love laughs and sees the joy surrounding us. It's tough, it can face anything. It never loses trust in God or in people. It never loses hope, it never gives in. Love holds good everywhere for everybody, for everywhere. All things come and go, but there are some things that do not come and go. These three, trust, hope, and love last forever. Now you may have recognized that there's a phrase in there, a sentence that you've not heard before in other translations, and that's the sentence that says, love laughs and sees the joy surrounding us. And I will confess that was not part of Dale's translation. <laughs> I added that in the middle of the service because as I was reading that scripture lesson, this very, you know, beautiful wedding and surrounded, our granddaughter, great-granddaughter, Kaylee, who was a flower girl, who has kind of been taught that that you have to pick things up before you can get something out again. Pick that moment to pick up her little basket and step out of the uh, line of the bridesmaids and start walking across the front of the uh, meeting room and picking up all the flower petals she dropped and went all the way down the main aisle picking that up. And you could just see people, the joy on their faces. And I thought, Paul could have added that line. That would have been really helpful. That love laughs and sees the joy surrounding us. Because there was joy that day. That was so wonderful. It saved her uncle who was getting married because he was so nervous. And when he saw that, he quit sweating and he began smiling and got into the service and everybody else just cracked up. And she looked up and just smiled as she was doing it. And she knew she could play with something else later because she had picked up her mess. There is joy around us to be seen. And that joy, that laughter as Christopher Good child said, creates a space for grace. Last night, Nancy and I went out uh, for dinner for a little while and she was asking me what <laughs> I was gonna speak on and I said I was gonna speak on humor, and uh, she goes, you're not going to tell your corny Bible jokes, are you? And I said, only one. Only one. I'm going to read a verse from one of the shortest men in the Bible. This is how we pronounce his name, Nehemiah. Um, but Nehemiah said, go eat rich food and drink something sweet and send portions of this to anyone who have nothing ready. This day is holy to our Lord. Don't be sad because the joy from the Lord is your strength. The joy from the Lord is your strength. Sing and rejoice, ye children of the day and of the light. Ye children of the day and the light, for the Lord God is at work, even in this thick night of darkness. So I'll leave you with a little query.
today to ponder the rest of our time together and then maybe to carry with you throughout the day. And that is, how might I live more in a spirit of holy hilarity or Quaker mirthquakeness or at least maybe a little bit less seriously.
Thanks, Lynn, for the music today. And are there any closing thoughts that friends would like to share, those who need to leave uh, before we move to unprogram worship? Many thanks. Well, we will hopefully see you next week.
As we come to the close of our time, are there any closing thoughts? I'm just glad to be back. And we're glad you are. <laughs> <laughs> and I really like the phrase that humor opens a space for grace. And that just keeps going around in, in, the, in my mind, but I, I really appreciate that thought today. Enjoy your message. So who was the shortest man in the Bible? Other than Zacchaeus, you mean? <laughs> Bill Dad, the shoe height. Oh, okay. <laughs> Not right at the top of my list of people that I know. That's... <laughs> Yes, that's a, he was from Shu, and so he's known as a Shuite. So Bill Dad the Shuite. Okay. Oh, well, I've got a million of them. Have a good week. Bye, Sue. Bye, Sue. I just have, um, I've been thinking about this for a while, but it just kind of occurred.